look at the heavy freight trains in the far west end of the Chicago, Fort Wayne, and Eastern Railroad begins, unsurprisingly, on the rails of the Indiana Harbor Belt. A cold autumn evening is rapidly giving way tonight as two EMDs are notched out lugging over 9,000 feet of train east. runs a manifest from their large yard in Fort Wayne to the IHB's Blue Island Yard every day. These trains can often stretch well over a mile in length. Per the usual, the IHB is slammed with all sorts of rail traffic this evening. CSX train M352 is doubling their long train of auto racks into Gibson Yard behind two GE AC44 CWs. We'll head east to Ivanhoe Junction and Gary for an uninterrupted look at the eastbound CFE. Dusk at Ivanhoe Junction. The evening tranquility is about to be interrupted by the blissful music of hard-working EMDs racing east. The train has left IHB rails behind and is now traversing the CSX Porter subdivision. The CFME utilizes four and a half miles of trackage rights on the line to reach home rails at Tallston Junction. The CFE began providing service to General Motors out of Fort Wayne, gaining a substantial increase in traffic volumes to the IHB. We're back at the Colfax Street grade crossing just east of Ivanhoe Junction for a look at another CFE train. Today, the westbound from Fort Wayne has made it here in the late afternoon hours.
An EMD SD40-2 as well as two GP38-2s are in charge of today's train, the leader being the CFE 3486, a former Norfolk Southern motor that arrived on the property in 2021. Featured on today's train is a large amount of traffic from Steel Dynamics Columbia City plant, another very large shipper on the railroad. Large quantities of structural steel and rail are shipped out of the plant while scrap metal is shipped in. Given enough time, the combined 7,000 horsepower pulling today's heavy train can still get it up to track speed. We'll follow the train to the west end of IHB's Gibson Yard. The auto racks will be cut off the rear of the train here at Gibson Yard before the rest of the train continues west to Blue Island. We'll head a mile west to State Line to get a golden hour run by of the train. As to be expected on the harbor, the train will be held up for an extensive amount of time by a red signal another mile west of here.
Another fall evening finds a short westbound working Gibson Yard with the 3486 leading again. Some very appropriate fall decor decked out the roof of the 3486 this evening. I decided to upload this video when I did for a reason. With their conductor on board, the CFE can rip west. Tonight's train consists exclusively of tank cars from the large bunge plant in Decatur, south of Fort Wayne. At a very foggy Gibson Junction, we catch a cf &E crew with a solid train of auto racks from the General Motors plant destined for Gibson Yard. While the railroad typically utilizes two to three crews to make the entire westward run, this crew went on duty late the previous night and has miraculously run the train all the way here from Fort Wayne, though they now have less than an hour to work before outlawing. Three four actual EMDs are in charge of the train today. 2096, a GP38-2 is leading two GP40-2s. Note the 2096's unique hybrid K5LA air horn. We're back at Seoul Avenue in Hammond. Today's westbound has few enough auto racks that they can highball Gibson Yard and head straight to Blue Island.
racing with train to Dalton, another set of VMDs were making their way west on the harbor. Train BA2 is returning to Blue Island from the railroad's Michigan Avenue yard. Leading the train is GP38-2, number 3800, which dons an attractive Salute Our Troops paint scheme. With BA-2 into the yard, the CFE gets the signal to do the same. The crew will take a few hours to work the yard before heading back east. We'll head east to Burnham to catch the eastbound train returning at speed. The eastbound heads for home as they provide us with quite the run by at Burnham. This GMD SD40-2 leaves no questions to its heritage as it leads the train east. My personal favorite unit on the cf &E roster, this former Canadian Pacific engine is one of two to wear the extremely tattered paint of its predecessor road, and is lettered for the Indiana and Ohio, another Genesee and Wyoming operation. Next up at Burnham, an EMD GP40-2 is leading two SD40s in a continuous welded rail train from the Steel Dynamics plant west. No 
notice the heavy weld and rail seamlessly bending through the S-curve as if it's made of rubber. Back at State Line, we catch another eastbound led by the 5678 as the train provides quite the audio experience getting up to track speed. The crew has a little over an hour of working time left to get their train 50 miles east to the railroad's westernmost siding at Hobart. From here, we'll shift focus away from the IHB and follow some CFE trains as they run east of here. Back at Ivanhoe, CFE 2098 is diverging off of the IHB's former Gary and Western and onto the CSX Porter Sub. The train is taking the slightly slower route today due to the stopped auto rack train you can see it left. will proceed at this arguably sluggish 15 miles an hour until the entire train is cleared for slow speed interlocking. The now rapidly accelerating train is clear of the interlocking as they continue east on the CSX. East of Ivanhoe, another eastbound rockets through Gary at Clark Road. While utilizing the quarter sub, CFE movements typically carry CSX symbol Z538. Note the old Michigan Central milepost marker just east of the Great Crossing. At dusk, the same train we saw at State Line continues east. We've reached the Fort Wayne line and are now following the home rails of the CFE. 
In the Tolleston neighborhood of Gary, the line cuts through the middle of a church parking lot. The season is just around the corner, evidenced by some potash fertilizer loads that have been mixed into today's train. A westbound passes through Logan Park Assembly's parking lot with a former Southern Pacific Tunnel motor in the lead. A bit further southeast in Gary's Midtown neighborhood, we can make out a medium approach at Tolleston Junction. The westbound CFE is working on an uphill grade out of Hobart and into Gary. Today's westbound is Marquette Rail 3413, a former Oneida and Western SD40-2 with an obnoxiously loud horn. Note the Conroe era approach signal to Tolleston Junction at right. We've made it to Hobart on the east side of Lake County. The CFE crosses Deep River on a bridge of a contemporary design here, constructed in 2018 to replace the original 160 year old stone arch bridge built by the Pennsylvania Railroad. Deep River is quite popular amongst local canoeists and fishermen with numerous riverfront parks like this one lining its banks.
the peace and tranquility of this pleasant Saturday morning is temporarily interrupted by a westbound CF&E manifest. Two EMDs are giving it all they've got to get their heavy train moving out of town. Leading to today's train is CF&E GP38-2, number 2135, a former Norfolk Southern High Nose unit originally built for the Southern Railway in October of 1976. Lots of agricultural traffic on this late September train. And of course, plenty of auto racks to bring up the rear. Less than a half mile east of Deep River sits Hobart's original depot built by the Pennsylvania Railroad, which has since been repurposed as the city's Chamber of Commerce. The location is also the east end of the CFNE's lake siding, the westernmost siding on the railroad. At the time of recording this specific shot in October of 2022, lake siding was a common tie-down point for manifest to the IHB. In the distance, an IHV manifest is patiently awaiting today's crew to arrive by cab and take the train west. A few hours later, a crew has finally arrived and is getting the westbound underway on the last leg of its trip. Leading today's train is fan favorite CFE number 3316, an EMD SD40 T 2 originally built for the Southern Pacific as their 8520 in December of 1978. Prior to joining the CFE's roster in early 2013, the unit wore the pain of the Ohio Central as their 4025. The conductor has lined the train out of Lake Siding and will drive up to meet the train's head in and Gary once the switch has been restored. At the time of shooting this train, three crews were used to run these westbound trains. The most common scenario saw the first crew run the train from Fort Wayne to Warsaw, the second from Warsaw to Lake Siding here in Hobart, and the third that you see here, which would run the train from Hobart to the IHB and back. The train will run out to the IHB and return with inbounds well after dark later tonight. In early 2023, Genesine, Wyoming, the parent company of the cf &E, purchased a large quantity of wide-cap locomotives from General Electric to be dispersed around several of their properties. 
As it would turn out, the CF&E would be one of those railroads slated to get eight former CSX-840 CWs. Another G&W railroad, the aforementioned Indiana and Ohio, was to receive eight CSX-8s as well, along with a whopping 18 former BNSF-944 CWs. In September of 2023, many of these old BNSF units for the INO began arriving, and in mid-October, conveniently right as I was putting this video together, the CF&E shops in Fort Wayne had set up two of these Dash 9s for their sister railroad, and were directed to break them in on the trains to the IHB. The second of these trials would be the westbound of October 13th, with the new INO 4569 leading the train. An incredibly gloomy and chilly afternoon provided quite appropriate weather for today's westbound train as they swing off of home rails and onto the CSX Porter Sub at Tallston Junction. This is, for all intents and purposes, the westernmost end of the Chicago Fort Wayne and Eastern System. As of the posting of this video, these units were only being tested. This could remain the case, or perhaps they'll end up being retained by the CFE for many years to come. Whatever the case, it certainly exemplifies changing times to come on the railroad. Four and a half miles west, we're just south of the Diamonds at Ivanhoe Junction to watch the train crossing the CN's former EJ and E main. Back on the rails of the IHB, daylight has faded far too quickly as the train completes their Gibson set-out. While waiting for the train's conductor to drive up to the head end, we'll take a quick last light look at the new motor. Like many BNSF-9s, the 4569 was returned to GE off of an expired manufacturer's lease in March of 2021. There's something vaguely familiar about the 4569. What could it be? That's right. Keen observers of the channel might remember that we caught this very unit running under the GCX banner on an IHB transfer on Labor Day in 2022.
power is swung off the IHB Burnham branch and is returning light to Gibson Yard. The light engines will meet westbound Norfolk Southern train 35J and some more unreleased footage of the IHB's east end. Back on the CFE. The day after catching 4569, IORY 4505 led the next westbound. Today, it's an empty unit sand train off of the Wheeling and Lake Erie, another rather unique train that runs across the railroad. The train will be left here in the IHB's Calumet City siding pending interchange back to the Canadian Pacific. These trains run rather irregularly but are always a sight to see being hauled by a short line. We've returned to Tolleston Junction for a final GE run on a perfect 62 degree October day. Today's crew is just marked up with the CSX and will take a medium approach onto the Porter Sub. Trailing on today's run is the Ohio Central 4023, former Rock Island SD40-2 that was transferred to the CFE in early 2023.
little too typical for the city of Gary, abandoned furniture serves as today's trackside prop. We'll close out the video with a few more catches of the cf &E. The EMD era may be coming to a close soon, but the railroad will always be one of the more interesting additions to the Chicago land rail scene. Nothing beats the 2095's unique P5A, though it was admittedly sounding quite sick this 28th of April. In October of 2022, I seemed to have good luck catching the railroad's resident tunnel motor. Another westbound is working Gibson Yard with the 3316 and 3415. The train will wait for some cross traffic at Holman Junction before continuing west. The CFE departs west. The unit's Angela K5LA from its Ohio Central days once again brought a smile to my face. One of the railroad units we haven't seen yet, the 3487, leads today's westbound. All 
also in the contest is the railroad's other former Canadian Pacific unit, the 5597, as well as a GP38-2. Gibson work complete, the train crawls off of the yard late and ducks under Holman Avenue. The 7,000-foot train would take quite a while at this slow rate getting out of the yard, so we'll head west and return to Burnham for a look at the train at speed. The 3487 is seen once more at Holman Junction for the final train of this video. In order to soak in the raw EMD noise, the narration will end here. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this look at one of Chicago's lesser followed operations. One where blissful EMD music and a huge train are almost always a guarantee, and one that will always bring a smile to my face.